men and fathers need to understand very clearly that there is a war underway to make their sons into one of two things, either a male or a little girl. And if you look at society out there, that is primarily what you see. You see people with male genitalia that are males or they're little girls. And it's your job to fix that as a dad so that your son doesn't grow up to be a male. Instead, he grows up to be a man. Those are different things. And I want my son to be an actual freaking man. I want him to be a man of God. And one of the ways that I do that, that I instruct my son to be a man, and Lord knows there's a lot that we have to work on. One of the ways is I take him out to the woods. Because in the woods, while hunting, he can learn vital lessons ethical and moral lessons out there that he's not going to get sitting in front of a television, sitting in front of an iPad. He's just not going to get them there. Um, let me set it to you like this. I took my son out looking for deer antler sheds the other day. So this time of year, white-tailed deer bucks are dropping their antlers so that they can grow new ones on for next year. And we're walking around the property, looking under leaves and trees for these antler sheds. And as we got near the neighbor's property, we see that there is a nice antler on the neighbor's side of the fence. And I know the neighbor, so I wasn't too concerned about the legality of this. But I had my son hop that fence and go grab that antler. And he brings it back to me. And we're looking at this thing. And it is a nice buck. Okay. It was definitely a shooter buck for our type of property that we hunt. And my son was all excited about finding this. I mean, we hadn't found anything yet. This is the first one. And it's a shooter buck. This is definitely an antler you want to take home and set on your dresser. And, and hope that you can find this deer walking around next year and put a bullet in him. So we're looking at this thing, and after we took our glance at it, I grabbed it out of his hand, and I threw it back over the fence. And he's like, Dad, why'd you do that? And I said, because, son, it doesn't belong to us. It wasn't on our property. That belongs to the neighbor. That's his antler. We're not going to take it. And I asked him, I said, what would it be if we were to take that and walk to our house with it? And he's like, stealing? I said, yeah, we would be committing theft. We would be stealing from somebody else. And right there, my son learned a valuable lesson. It, it's not taking a candy bar out of the candy store that you got to teach your son not to do. It's taking the thing that he feels like, number one, he could definitely get away with. But number two, it's kind of a gray area. And I said, no, this is theft. We're not going to do it. That's not who we are. I'm raising you to be a man. You throw that antler back across that fence and we walk away from it because it's not ours. And that's a valuable lesson. If you look around the country, America's youth are not being trained up like that at all. You see these videos of kids running into a Best Buy or a Target or a Walmart, running out with their hands full of stuff. It's not going to be my son. I guarantee you that. And it better not be your son because you're going to be as intentional with him as you need to be and demonstrate those ethics and those morals guided by the word of God so that your son goes, you know, if anything... Here's what his mindset ought to be when he faces an ethical or moral dilemma. What goes through his mind, it may not be, well, I remember this one situation, and so I'm not going to do this. But it could also be, my dad wouldn't do that. My grandpa wouldn't do that. So I'm not going to do it. 
And that right there is how you and I can take our young boy and not let him grow up to be a male, not let him grow up to be a little girl or whatever the heck our culture wants him to grow up into be. Instead, you make him a man.